All right, and we are live. Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Entitled Tuesday on chess.com. It is Tuesday, May 5th, right at noon, U.S. Central Time, playing an FM in the first game. This is a 10-round, 3-plus-1 blitz event. Let's try to get off to a good start. I'm streaming this live on Twitch as well. Just fired up the stream. Greetings to those of you in the Twitch chat. Let's play Bishop G5 going into a QGD now. All right. I'll keep this bishop. Hello to MG Streak in the chat. Greetings. All mainline theory here. I usually like to take on D5 in these structures, so I'll play it at this juncture. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's take. If bishop takes h4, I have options. Could just pull my knight back. Black will have the two bishops, but I have two pawns in the center compared to their one. Also, I could take on h4 or maybe even venture knight takes c7, although they have bishop takes f2 check. Hi, prosthetics. Good afternoon. All right, my opponent does play bishop takes h4. Yeah, interesting. So could grab one of these pawns, but again, bishop takes f2. Mm. Lukewarm feelings about, so I'm just going to drop back. Hey, Muldanka, good to see you. Also, James Ramsden. Battle spears engaged, yes. Someone correctly pointed out that these are battle spears now rather than battle tips. <laughs> the effect of the quarantine. Thank you to James, by the way, for subscribing. 12 months. All right. So that was a time-consuming operation for Black to go get the bishop pair, but I can completely understand why they did it. Just trying to line up with their queen. Any MJB fuel for this tournament? Oh, absolutely, man. I got it right here. I've got more brewing downstairs. Contrary to my, my coffee drinking habits, especially of late, I've been getting good sleep lately, guys, so... I'm sure many of you will be happy to know that. <laughs> when I played in the I Am Not a GM match last week, I was just super sleep deprived. But uh, it's been going really well since then. So thank you guys for your support. All right, let's take it with the knight. It's probably going to play knight c5. Mm, no knight c5. Okay, so this alignment could be important. That's one thing that you know I gravitate towards in a position like this. I'm going to play bishop e4 and... Try to get a favorable trade where there's going to be some pressure all on these guys. These highlighted pieces. Hello, Cola Bick. Also, Perchik. Greetings. Hi, Black Guan. Also, Med Student. Belgian Novice. Greetings, my friend. Zombie Zach. Hello. Suad Bejtovic. Greetings. Dr. X Masizi. Mentos Fruit Core. Also, Sippy Cup. Anthony. Okay. Rook here. Let's try to play a good move in this position. Knight d6 comes to mind. Also knight b5. Knight b5 looks potentially disruptive. Yeah, let's play knight b5. Attack this. a6 is the obvious move. I can jump into d6 though. Even get capture here and then rook takes d7 is lurking. That might be the best way to play. Hey, Eschner, thank you for the subscription. 24 months. Yep, got that MJB. Whoa, and Belgian novice gifting 10 subs to the community. Thank you, Belgian. You spoil me. Wow. I'll read those subs out after the game. I think I'm going to play knight takes f6 here. That looks most clear in my estimation. I think I might. Oh, I might win a pawn, but yeah, I'm going to have a better structure, so I'll do this. Takes with a pawn. Wow, that's dangerous. I really thought he would take with the queen there. So now I should be better without sacrificing. So let's play knight d6. I'm on the rook. I'm on this pawn. If I grab the pawn, knight c5 is a bit of an issue. So maybe check instead. Yeah, check. Ah, this is a... Hmm. Queen h5. There's a lot of potential ideas here. Just have to choose one. Hmm. Definitely looks like a position 
where there should be some concretely winning line. I'm gonna go here, threaten this and this, force king g7, and then I think I'm gonna lift the rook. Try to get that involved. Looks very strong. Okay, and let's double up. Thank you, thank you guys. First game of the session. Let's make it a good one. Not sure I played that correctly. Probably not, but it's a lot of pressure even still. Okay. Can win a pawn in various ways. Queen f3 comes to mind. Let's go here. Play for the attack. Ooh, okay. F4 is a threat. Mm, he has queen g4. Wow. Okay. I'm up a piece now. Rook g7, I'm going to play here, I think. Oh, no. That drops material. Let's not do that. Let's play fast, though. Queen h2, I'm going to go rook f2. I might have just allowed a draw. I hope not. Oh, he dropped his rook there. Okay. Okay, this is a very sloppy game, but I'm going to get it done. Just pre-move some stuff. All right. <laughs> I was not ready for that time scramble. <laughs> that was super sloppy on both our parts. I think he should have played his rook down to the second rank. I'm not sure why he didn't do that. Like right here when I played rook d1. Thought for sure he was going to play rook c2. Threatens mate. And then I was briefly considering if I could escape the draw by doing um, a king march up the board like king here. But that looks very dangerous. And he has check here, check for instance. I'm going to be losing in that line. Hey, Big Steve. Thanks for the 10 gifted subs. Let me chalk up that win. All right. We got a lot of support here already. Yeah. Lots and lots of mistakes there. This is one of these positions I got to get better at because I have so many good options and you got to choose one. That's the thing. You can only choose one. And in a blitz game, it's hard to tear yourself away from looking at all of the tempting ways you have to play and attack. Oh, and my alerts have been... I'm sorry about that, guys. They've been blocked. There's a lot going on in that first game. Yeah, okay. So we get the victory. And by the way, there are 976 players in this tournament, including Hikaru, who was just playing in the one in the Nations Cup. So he must have just got done playing. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate all those subs. So let me go back here and read a few out. Belgian Novice with the 10 gifted subs to Philo Saint, Ni Wow, Longhorn, Chester, Volker, Zombie Zach, Vulcan, Sharke in the time of Nick, and Ryath. Awesome, Belgian. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Eschner came in with 100 bits. Perchik with the 300 bits. Cheers, Perchik. Perchik said, hey, John, today I finally reached 1500 blitz rating. By the way, let me pull up a game. Let's watch the Penguin. So Perchik reached 1,500 Blitz rating on chess.com. Thanks for your instruction. Awesome, man. Nice rating milestone right there. Congrats. Keep climbing. Penguin, Penguin Monkey, thanks for the 100 bits. 
And then Big Steve with the 10 gifted subs to Sarlat the Great, Slappy Bag Owen, Drisk94, Baraba, Chess Fun, M. Lars, Redfish Blue, War Kitten, and Sitter Seth, and Drunk Monk. Cheers. Versailles, thank you for subscribing. Two months. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, also, we got a ton of support today, guys. Hey, I'm, I'm happy to be here with you all. C. Uh, Wizzo as well, thank you for subscribing. Three months. Ominous ZH, two months. This is Hey John, greetings. Sun Tzu Lombardi, hello. With the, the 24 months in a row by Sun Tzu Lombardi, by the way. Cheers, my friend. And we just had Presetex gifting 10 subs to the channel. Dude, you guys are spoiling me right now. Thank you. Uh, Presetex with the subs to Antinoi, Chessified, Switch the Foot, RPG. Hello, RPG, by the way. Longtime viewer. Bombadil. Okay, and we got our next game going. Numidian Merc, Cool Empire, Jedi Bleeder, Silky G Smooth, D. Cole 2000, all gifted by Presetex. My man. And also, Alone Benazard, just subscribe with Twitch Prime and follow. So, it must be new viewer. Thank you so much. All right. Whew. <laughs> The fans were pumping hard today. The computer fan, I should say. Ashner gifting a sub to Black Luan. All right. I always say Eschner. I know it's E. Ashner, but I can't help but call you Eschner. So thank you for that gifted sub. Enjoy it, Black Luan. All right, A4. Let's play Queen C7. Playing an IM, Polish IM here. Okay, bit of a restrained approach. I'm going to play bishop f8, just drop back and protect here. I usually like to go for b5 in these setups, so that's what my eye is drawn towards. I'm going to do it. White hasn't inserted h3, which is a little unusual. Okay, knight there. So taking here is perhaps a little bit risky because the b5 pawn is loose. So also this diagonal could be a problem. So I'm just going to let him take the bishop on g4. Yeah, let's pull back. So again, a game where my opponent has the bishop pair, but I actually don't think it's all that much of a an issue. Uh, let's go here and attack c2. And Prosthetix gifting another sub to LOL uh, Loki, <laughs> Lokilo. Okay. Thank you, Prosthetix. Debating if I want to play g6 here. Knight e3, bishop h6. Mm, maybe. Yeah, let's get the knight out of there. And also, Eschner gifting a sub to Juan Jacek. All right. And Big Steve, Big Steve, a lot of gifted subs going around here. Gifting a sub to Scotch Goggles. Thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, Queen c5 is something I'm considering here. I feel like he's going to go for c4 very soon. So whatever I do should keep that in mind. Let's go queen here. And on c4, I might play queen b4. Whoa, IRL Binky. Just gifted a sub to Axiom Fox. You guys are going nuts today in the best possible way. Thank you. Okay, Rook D3. Looks like he's getting ready for a possible Rook doubling on the file here. So I'm going to play this just for general reinforcement purposes. Nope, goes for C4. Okay. play this intended move. This is a sharp position. Takes. Okay. Otis, thank you for the 150 bits. Says, hi, John. Good luck and enjoy. Thank you, my friend. 
Thank you very much. Okay. Let's get stuff protected. Guard against queen c8. The rook is loose. I'm significantly behind the clock here. But that's all right. Feel good about this position still. Helpful to keep that bishop secure as well. Rook d6. That seems kind of loose to me. But maybe playable. Queen here? Let's try that. Looking at the rook, maybe also coming in here. Moldanka, thank you for subscribing. Extending it through June. Cheers. All right. Going to focus to the end of the game here, guys. Check. Check is like real problematic looking for them. Just calmly plays his bishop back. All right. Let's advance. Bishop d2, I can go here. Renzo, thanks for subscribing. Four months. Getting chased. Mm, does this pawn drop? It does. Okay. Ah, bishop b4. Yeek. Yikes. Probably have to take here. Now I'll try to get something going against F2 if I can. Not going to be easy though. Okay, that might have been a slight mistake on his part. Just try to attack. Hmm. Mm, just takes here. Yeah, I'm going to resign. Wasn't sure what to do in that position. He played a good game. That was tough. Let me think back to where I could have played that better. Maybe giving up the light square bishop wasn't the best, but it felt like my activity was good here. He was having to defend c2. But yeah, I have a feeling after c4, I'm, I'm somewhat worse. Is he's rushing with the pawns here? With the rook behind. And the opening of the position should favor white with the bishop pair. So, hmm. It was a bit hand-to-hand -hand here. I thought I was getting something with queen e1, but maybe there's no follow-up after bishop f1. It is kind of hard for my minor pieces to join the attack. So. All right. Thank you, guys. Guy Go Bear, thanks again for the 11, month, the 11 months in a row. Also, Perchik gifting another sub to Mentos Fruit Core. Thank you. Mr. EQ, <laughs> resubscribing. Two months in a row. That's 24 total for Mr. EQ. Says, your hair is particularly tall today. Yeah, I haven't even looked at myself on the webcam. But as I was saying earlier, battle spears now, guys. Here, let's pull up a game to watch. Um, I see Grishuk in the tournament. Who else do we have? Jan Nepomnishi. Him and Hikaru were just playing in the Nations Cup. Like 30 minutes ago. Mickey Tarian, he's won title Tuesday recently. Dulles, I believe that is uh, Dubov, Daniel Dubov. We have Anish Giri playing. Le Quang Liam. Uh, Eric is playing. Shout out to Eric, the chess bra. He's on two out of two. Oh, yeah. Hey, Thunder Dazzle gifting a sub to Why Won't My Name Fight. <laughs> AKA fit. Thank you, Thunder Dazzle. Yakov N, the legend. 
yeah, it's impossible to to list all of these title players, these strong title players in a timely fashion. This looks good for Big Fish. I think he's going to win here. Can almost play for mate. Yeah, Rook coming over to a6. Somehow black is defending. Ah, no, but check. Rook b8 and check. That would have run a, won a Rook there. White missed a full win of a Rook. He's probably still winning, though. He's up two pawns here. And game over. Okay. <laughs> you think we're rapidly approaching hashtag Scandy call time? Not a cult. <laughs> nice MG streak. I am Rosen playing. All right. Shout out to Eric Rosen. Good luck to him. MJB, what is it? It's only the uh, the coffee fueling my my chess exploits of late. Yeah. Starbucks never returned my calls, so you know it's it's MJB now. I haven't been to Starbucks in a month and a half. Hashtag ad. No sponsorship. Nope. Not getting any MJB bucks. But if they want to sponsor me, I'm open to that. That would be completely cool. This is the last game of the round. Mishonic versus VP Setter. Interesting end game. So without the Rooks, this would be a draw. That's the thing about this ending, because Black has the wrong color Bishop for promoting this pawn on H1. So this is going to hinge upon whether the addition of the Rooks allows Black to win, which I suspect it does. Have I emailed MJB, John? No, I haven't. Hello, Andy is Yoda, by the way. I'm not sure MJB has the largest presence online. They're a pretty venerable brand, <laughs> but I should get in touch with them. You're right. Ross Albrecht boss. This is crazy. I know who Ross Albrecht is in real life. I actually went to college with the guy and <laughs> this is a completely different subject, but Ross Albrecht is the uh, creator of the Silk Road and is currently in federal prison. <laughs> so it's so weird to see this username based on someone you know in real life. It's random. It's my random encounter for the day. I wasn't like super good friends with the guy or anything, but uh, we actually had some friends in common. Uh, he hung out with some chess players, played ping pong with the guy in the ping pong club at the University of Texas at Dallas. Yeah, Kolobik. And the denials begin. <laughs> nice. Okay, queen b3. Interesting stuff here. He's chasing that, that bishop early. Let's just play queen e7 and hold the bishop here. Hey, pass pawn. Thank you for the subscription. 10 months. I know, little sippy cub. It's a crazy story. It's one of those things when you read about someone that you know in an article and just the way that you remember them from a past time was completely different than what you would expect to read in an article like that. Just nuts. Okay, knight bd7 looks pretty logical here. Uh, so does a5, though. Let's go knight bd7. Hey, Avenger. Okay, so now knight takes g4 could be a threat in the future. I suspect he's going to play g5, though. And then on knight d5, I run into knight takes d5, bishop takes d2, king takes d2. Ah, oh, maybe that works out in my favor, actually. That probably does. Okay, he castles. I think I'm going to castle over here, too. Scandy-looking structure. Golden Eagle Eye, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime. Hello to Golden. Okay. So, feeling this pawn might be loose. Knight d5 or knight h5? Which one? They both have merits. 
I'm going to go with knight d5. Centralized. He plays e4. Okay. So after takes, he wants to take with a pawn, I assume. Let's do this. If he takes with a bishop, he loses g5, so pawn takes is expected. Interesting little position here. I like my position intuitively. I enjoy playing these compact structures with pawns on e6 and c6. It's the type of position, though, <clears throat> I'm never surprised if the computer prefers uh, white. Okay, let's activate now. Assuming the bishop drops back, I think I'm going to go for c5 or e5, one of the two. Probably e5, because c5 might run into queen b5. c5, queen b5 looks a little annoying. Admittedly, I open up my structure in playing that way. But I like it. And he does have bishop g4, for instance, and I got to watch f7 now. But if takes, takes, queen takes f7, I have bishop takes c3. So maybe he can go, oh, no, I got to be careful. Bishop g4, bishop f4 there. Ooh, okay. Might have to pull an audible if that happens. If take, queen takes f7, maybe I throw in rook f8. Although that too, okay, he's, he's probably calculating that right now. I think I still need to go for this. Let's think for a second. Yeah, I think I still go for this. And here, I probably throw in rook f8. Because on check... Or maybe this rook. He's going to do it. He's daring. Maybe this rook. Check, king over. Bishop f4, I can actually take, or take on d1 first, actually. Oh, no. No, I gotta use this rook. Just to avoid problems on the file, I think. Goes back, okay. All right, really got to watch this diagonal, so I'm guarding that, watching it like a hawk. Let's take, not take here next. El Cabrera, thank you. Two months from El Cabrera. I'm on the bishop, all the way back, all right. Let's play to coordinate now. I'm up a pawn. Position's a little loose, though. Hide the king. King here, can I take? I think so. He's probably going to take and then take on g7 and roll the dice. Oh. Well, definitely take here now. Rook d1, I have bishop takes g5. Okay. Okay. Now just play fast, John. We got this. We got this. Can four fork. Oh, watch out for stalemates, but he has b3 to go to. I'm going to make sure I don't cover b3 yet. 
I can go here, because if he takes, I actually take back and it's mate. He does have rook here, that's just a funny defense. Check. He's trying. These guys are always sneaky, man. There's always some trap. <laughs> just straight up sneakiness. All right. There we go. That was a nice game, I think. I mean, he played a little loose later on, but I'm happy with how that went. There were some pitfalls that I needed to negotiate. I think it's important to play rook d to f8 instead of rook h to f8. Because on rook h to f8, I was really worried about check here and now bishop f4, hitting the queen. And the thing is, if I take here and we get a trade like this, I lose the rook on d8. So I calculated I could insert this trade. But I think the issue is that after takes here, oh no, this does work. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, it does work. I take with check. I was seeing that he had rook d8 in some positions, but no. The fact that I take with check is important. So that's why I went with the other rook, but yeah, I think it's okay. Why not rook takes d2 instead of rook f8? That was a long game, so the next round might be starting here in a second. Rook takes d2 instead of rook f8. Oh, you mean here. I didn't consider it. <laughs> That's the honest answer. I did not look at rook takes d2 here. I only looked at uh, bishop takes c3 initially, and then the ideas to cover here. But yeah, you're right. This might just be good. So you can't take with the king. It's... It's queen takes c3 mate. So you're saying after this, yeah, this is probably just winning, right? Rook c2, this is mate. Yeah, that was good. So miss on my part there. Okay, what's the three games going? Oops, didn't mean to close that. So we, here we have white executing the Lucena position. White knew what they were doing. They put their rook on the fourth rank. If check, king here. And then white can play rook g4, blocking and winning. Nice execution. Yeah, nice spot, by the way. Whoever that was suggesting rook takes d2. Bridge building, yeah. Thanks again for all the support, guys. I'm, I'm probably missing some alerts here. Let's play e4 in this game against Raitenko. I think I hit all the recent subscriptions. Golden Eagle Eye, I think I mentioned you, but thanks again, guys. Let's play a c3 Sicilian. g6, okay, interesting. Yeah, this is a possible way to play. I'm not going to go for d4. d4 is the main move. I'm going to try to play this in slightly more experimental fashion, because black usually goes for d5, but I'm going to try to control the d5 square. Oh, you remember that, Mr. EQ? Nice. Yeah, you guys can check it out on the uh, Endgame Bootcamp on Chessable if you're interested in learning that for free. Also on my YouTube channel. I have a video on the Lucena position. Okay. Let's take and check. Do you get many Greg Shahadi fans in your chat? <laughs> There's not too many Greg Shahadi fans to begin with, so the answer is no. <laughs> Thanks, Shu. Glad you're liking Chessable. Okay. I'm going to play bishop g5. I know this leaves this vulnerable, but I'm going to dare him to take it and see what happens. Shahadi denounced the Scandi, so I denounced Shahadi. Yes, he's an enemy of the state here on this channel.
But he's got some Stockholm Syndrome going on because he actually plays the Scandinavian himself, and he played it in his last I Am Not a GM match against Chris Ayip. Not only in the bullet portion, but also in the 5 plus 1 portion. So he's a very confused individual. So I'm threatening bishop takes c6 followed by taking on e7. Hey, Tomas. Oh, nice. That's cool. Got your friend in chessable. Good to hear that. Love it. How do you remain so positive, John? Asked Sam the guy. Well, you know, especially when it comes to chess. Ooh, this is an interesting move, by the way. Breaks the pin. He's trying to take on d4. I might want to take and play h3. Kind of feels that way. But then, mm, there's some mass liquidation that could happen. I think I'm going to do that, though. But as I was saying, when it comes to chess, this is all gravy to me. I mean, this is my livelihood, too. But the fact that I'm even able to do this in the first place, I mean... I've literally made board game a board game my living, and it's gone very well. I'm just very thankful for that. So there's no reason for me to not be in a good mood. Okay, so he takes this pawn. All right, let's just play a pawn down for the time being. Let's see if he wants to part with his bishop, though, to keep it. Thanks, Guy Gobert. So, down a pawn here, but I do think it will be somewhat difficult for Black to keep it without allowing some counterplay. Let's go, Bishop, here. Hey, Nick Schul. It hasn't been scheduled yet. No, the match with Greg. I think chess.com is waiting until the... Ooh, that is a weakening move. Go target F7. I think they're waiting till the Nations Cup finishes, which is going to be going for the next, I think, week or so. Now let's play H4. Start probing. Probably play something like knight A5. I could have also played A3 just to try to keep the bishop on this diagonal. Might be a good idea to do that, even though he's inviting h5. Ooh, I'm going to play h5. I might not get another chance to do this because he could play h5 himself. So let's seize this opportunity. This is a typical way of playing when they have this formation, guys. Trying to run your h-pawn up the board and weaken their position. Really trying to focus on the dark squares. The mating construction would be pawn on h6, queen on f6 if I could ever achieve that. So like here, check. It's kind of close. He will just take, though, most likely. Uh, he's maybe looking for knight d4. <clears throat> hmm. There's 95 against that. Okay, let's go here. Now I gotta play faster. Okay, interesting. There's a check here. I don't know who this favors, though. This is sharp now. Hmm. 
Hmm. Let's not lose on time here. Oh, missed that that was coming with check. Bummer. Hmm. That ah, that's gonna hurt. Oh man. Ugh, lost control of that one. So what happened there? Hmm. Yeah, I was trying to find some way to to pressure his uh his knight with the pin. Then he played queen e4. Probably bishop c4 is just a bad move. Queen e4 might be good. Maybe I should repeat here. Just go back. Try to pin his knight. Might be roughly even. Hey, Diabolic. Let's not lose on time. Moves with 0.3 seconds on his clock. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, Bishop c4, you're right. Sam, the guy that was an unprotected piece in time pressure. Recipe for disaster. They're magnets for tactics. Should black block the h-pawn when it's pushed on the king's side? That's generally what you do in a situation like this. Yeah, you play h5, so that, that's what I was expecting here. Felt like I had something. I mean, I did get the pawn back. But, yeah, just a tricky position and time pressure. Tricky for both sides, because to win the d2 pawn, I did have to weaken my own king. I mean... I'm actually somewhat lucky here that after queen c6, I'm not losing to a knight fork. So king f1, covering h1. He has this check, and I can't go king g1 because of this. Hmm, okay. How are the standings looking? A lot of players on 4 out of 4, including Anish Giri. Also Jan Nepomnishi. Giga Kuparadze. I've seen this guy play in person before. He is a uh, Georgian Grandmaster. This guy is one of the fastest players over the board I've ever seen. I played a tournament with him in Stavanger, Norway back in 2017. This dude like almost always had 45 minutes to an hour more on his clock compared to anyone he was playing, even other Grandmasters. <laughs> it was amazing. And he was just like always sitting back very calm and just blitzing out his moves. And doing really well. I think he finished like second in the tournament. He might have even won it actually, now that I think about it. So I'm not surprised that this guy's a beast of a blitz player. Okay. Two more games left in this round. That one is over. And that is it. Okay. Next round coming up. I'm out of coffee, so I'm going to have to get some soon, guys. Unless we're on break right now, but I don't think so. Cola Bick, thank you for subscribing. Cheers. Are we on break at the moment? After round four, seems kind of early. I thought it was later. Sinister Robert, thank you for subscribing. Two months. Uh, you guys are loving the MJB emote. Thanks again to Anton Squared Me, a.k.a. Dan, for that. Appreciate that, Anton, if you're out there watching. Thanks again, buddy. Oh, there's a five-minute break. Perfect. I'll be right back, guys. I'm just going to get more coffee. I'll see you guys back here shortly. Second half of the tournament. Cooper Adze won the Stavanger Open with a score of 7.5 out of 9. Yeah. That guy's good. Thanks for looking at that, that up, Tuner.
All right, guys. Greetings once again. So we're four rounds into Title Tuesday. Still 900 plus players in the field. Players do have a tendency to drop out as the tournament went along or goes along. Uh, I think we started with close to a thousand, if not over a thousand. Here are the current standings. Many players still on four out of four. You have to scroll down to get them all in. <laughs> John's chair is probably a better player than me. <laughs> John, is there a plugin for that score bar? I seriously want that, how to get that. That is actually a little script that someone wrote for me, a viewer. Uh, I started this series on YouTube a while back called Using the Clock as a Weapon, where I play five blitz games and try to play fast and just play practically. And when I was doing that, just as a way to try to keep score, several viewers actually wrote in creating little scripts to keep the score because uh, it was just a useful way to display it. So this is not something that's publicly available, but... Okay, playing a Grandmaster. I don't know which GM this is. Georgian Grandmaster. We have a London system. Buckle up, guys. <laughs> I say that semi-sarcastically. Londons can be fun. But uh, they can also be snoozers sometimes. I did co-author a London course on Chessable with Fide Master Daniel Barish. Was helpful in learning it myself. Bishop b5. I feel like that move's unusual. I, mean, I could play knight d7. e6 is 95, like that big of a deal. I don't know. Let's play knight d7. Break the pin. She watched Ginger GM. Well, the h pawn is still sitting here, so I don't know. And Simon likes the Jobava London, from what I remember. Okay, c4. Let's play e6 against that. Nino Batsiashvili. Yeah, she's good. Yeah, she is one of the strongest women players in the world. So thank you for, uh, for looking that up. I wasn't sure who this Grandmaster was. Based on the username. Okay, so this is looking real symmetric, especially if white takes on d5. When you did the London course, did you fall asleep? No, we actually recommended some interesting stuff, and there are sacrifices. So there's a bishop takes h7 sacrifice in actually several lines of the London, but one in particular that I was able to use in a game against Grandmaster Niklas Hushenbet several years ago in a match that we played. So there are exciting lines of the London. It's just that... If white wants to make it boring, there's not a whole lot black can do about that. Gets okay, castle. Really curious what she's going to do with this pawn. She takes. Okay. I'm giving up a pawn to try to get some activity. Yeah, let's go queen a5. Hit the a pawn. I'm being a bit liberal with my my uh, activity sacrifices today, but I'm just trying a slightly new style, guys. If I can get the time management down, I think it's going to be nice. I have a feeling she might have missed this move. Queen b5 hitting both of these points. She does have queen c1, though. Maybe knight b6 after that, looking for rook c8. Queen looks a little overloaded, but I don't think there's any way to exploit it for now. Could go maybe here, but nah, seems premature. Hey, Jay Chester. Yeah, likewise, man. Hope you're doing well. Okay, maybe rook over... It's also knight c4 interference ideas. Let's play the rook over though first. Which rook to do? Let's do this one. 
Mainly so I can play Bishop F8 if need be. Darshade Gaming, thank you for subscribing. 13 months. This is glad to see you back streaming again. Hope all is well. Thank you, man. Hope you're doing well too. Okay. Yeah, now let's put this here. I think is good. Good to do. I'm up on the clock here. Some nice pressure. My light square bishop is a strong piece. Reasonable blitz compensation. B4, okay. Looks a little weakening. Taking rook c8. I'm going to try for a pass pawn. Pass c pawn. Okay, so blockading. really like to play a5 but there's also a rook e5 i have to take into account so let's try to creep a little bit closer maybe i think now i'm gonna play a5 again just just going for it not worrying about consequences as much in a time scramble situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's step here. Behind Z pawn. Queen a5. Oh, she can take there. Ooh, I missed that. Completely missed that move. Well, trying to hold out with my two bishops now. But not looking good. Let's try to get in the king side somehow. Bishop takes g3 business. Let's see what happens. Go for a sack. Maybe this. Check. Okay. Oh, she can take actually. She missed this. Wow. Now I'm winning. Should be winning. Check. That's mate. I had mate in one, but all right. Hey, the sloppy play worked out. <laughs> Lek, thanks for the bits. Appreciate that. 500 bits right there. Yeah. That was a swindle. The old scanty swindle, even though this is a London. Don't ever think I got full compensation. But try to keep it complicated. That was really not looking good for the home team right here, guys, when she took on C4. Thanks, Eshner. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for the support. Have a good meeting. But yeah, again, guys, I'm just really working on trying to be practical and creating problems for my opponent in short time control situations. So here, I mean, if you're black, you've got to go for bishop takes G3. I'm down two pawns. The only thing I have going for me is that my queen is lurking close to her king. So, I managed to coordinate. Check. 
Initially, I was going to check here, but I wasn't sure about king f2. Uh, that might be good, actually, because I have queen g2, and king e1 runs into queen takes on g1. So yeah, actually, this was, a, I think, a substantial mistake, because she could have played take, take, and then promote. And I probably don't have a perpetual there. Bishop h3 was key, though. I did see that when I play rook, played rook e8, because queen g2, very natural move to make, I'm trying to smother my queen here, but... That turns the tables entirely. All right. Hey, SCV Chess. Let's try to take a look at a top game here. Aravind, he's probably on a good score. Yeah, he's on four. This position is a draw. Very easy opposite color bishop draw for black, but the FM... Who I think is on, yeah, he's on the chess bras team. This guy's pretty strong. As evidenced by the fact that he's 4 out of 4 in Title Tuesday. Hey, Morphe, thanks for the 100 bits. Hey, Joe Bruin, thank you. Good to see you. Calm under time pressure, that was the difference in you both then, John. You know, it's amazing how often these games just come down to it. I mean, even in my match with Lawrence, I think the fact that I stayed a bit more calm under time pressure than him and played a little more solidly and also seized my chances. That was the difference maker in many of the games. All right, here we go. Let's play, let's play D4 in this one. Try to go for a main line. I'll play Samish. The Zamish variation. Have I read Forcing Chess Moves by Hurtan? Uh, no, I have not. I've heard good things about it, though. Okay, c6. Play bishop e3. Hmm. I think you often want to play c5 here. But I'm going to play queen d2 first. If he goes a6, then I might consider it. Okay, he plays e5. Interesting. Let's go here. I was just discussing this type of structure with one of my students the other day. Don't be surprised to see me castle queenside and try to play for... Uh, a G4 style attack. Might even do it right now. G4, B5, Knight G3. Let's do it. So this is a usual attacking operation for white. Knight b6, hmm. So trying to use this square. Could just let him do that, but I feel like he might also go for a sack here. Let's let him do it. If he wants to attempt to uh, play knight c4 and get my bishop, I'm going to try to parlay that time into an attack against his king. I really wouldn't be surprised to see him play bishop takes g4. No, he goes knight d7. Okay. All right, let's keep attacking. Hmm. Bishop h6, maybe? Can he take and play g5? That's one thing you do have to watch out for here. Okay, I'm going to play bishop e2 before doing anything else. Just coordinate a little bit better. If I want to castle in the future, queenside, my rook will be able to get over. Just wasn't quite sure if I was ready for bishop h6 because of 
the capture and then g5 closing it off it's annoying all right let's step here okay so now he's probably going for bishop a6 okay now i think this is justified if he does the same thing at least i have this knight pointed at f5 so take take g5 i might just play knight e3 and try to jump into f5 and threaten mate also the d6 pawn Mm, okay, rook a7. So he's going to use the long-range defense. That means he's going to take with his f-pawn. It's a bit of a dangerous proposition, though. Okay, let's take. Okay, take. Get more pieces in the attack. Maybe drop a knight f5 move in the future. Would be a great move to play. Okay, he has queen f4 as a bailout measure at this point. He might be going for that. Let's put the king here. Going for this. If he plays queen f4, I'm not going to take it because he forks my knights if I do. Okay, now this really could be an idea. So he... He might want to take. I guess the question is, am I threatening anything if I play knight f5? I'm threatening d6. Hmm. Play b3, just try to play a useful move here. G7 is annoying. Kind of going backwards, but trying to look to play queen takes f4. Doesn't feel right, though. Feels like I'm teetering a bit here. All right, let's take that. The time has come. Ooh, he's going to sack. Interesting. To give this up, I think. He was threatening rook takes g3. I didn't see a way to deal with that. Oh, man. Bishop d3 is, like, practically... Oh, knight c3 is mate. <laughs> okay, there were way too many pieces coming at my king there, I think, to properly defend. I didn't play this move because of check and then check here, but that was probably the only chance. Yeah, that attack didn't go as planned. He had rook g7. That was a nice defensive move because it, it shuts down knight f5. I didn't find anything good after that. My attack just completely stalled. Yeah, I don't see anything here. And the problem is I can't ever initiate this trade because my knights get forked. You should watch some of John Bartholomew's time management videos. Touche. <laughs>
Yeah, that was that was a nice checkmate by him, by him at the end. And rook takes f3 makes perfect sense. And I, I mean, I played some weak moves here. Knight f1 really didn't want to make that move, but he's threatening this and the fork. And I can't move my king because this knight drops. I mean, I guess I could play this move maybe, but it looks wrong. He even has this move here, although that's a little less clear, to be fair. Hmm. I'll have to look at that one afterwards, see how I can improve that attack. Might be just fine for black the whole way. But it's cool how rook a7 is a long-range defense of the 7th rank. I mean, he's actually trying to defend the h7 point with that move. All right, let's take a look at some other games. We had six players on six out of six going into this round. Okay. Mm, Rook versus Bishop. John, are you going to stream I Am Not a GM Speed Chess Championship? We can't, Vladimirovsky, by the rules of the tournament. So... It is broadcast on the chess.com, Twitch, and YouTube page. I can locally record commentary if I want. I did that for uh, the match against David Proust, but nobody else in the field is doing that, so it's a pretty big disadvantage, and I didn't do it against Lawrence. So do follow the chess.com coverage, though, because it's super exciting watching it. I've been watching many of the other matches. White is nearly losing on time here. I can relate to this. And they did lose on time. Yeah, that one second increment, man. Brutal. It's weird because in bullet, it makes a big difference. You definitely notice the one second difference uh, increment in, in bullet. But in blitz, it actually almost feels just like a no increment game in a weird way. When is the semifinals? So my match with Greg has not been scheduled yet. Chess.com is still getting back to us. Rook first bishop is a draw, yes. So white was drawing that RPG. Just not on the clock. That game's over. Oh, what happened here? People are going crazy in the chat. What happened in this game? Really curious. Did white blunder their rook? Oh yeah, it was king and rook versus king and rook and white blundered. <laughs> Dianoski. Okay, let's try to get back on the board here, guys. I'll play a semi-slav this time. Play a Cambridge Springs. This is what uh, Sam Shanklin recommends in his recent course. Bishop takes f6 is a little unusual. You often do not see that played so early. Okay. Don't think bishop takes f6 is a theoretically critical move, but playable in a blitz game. Now, how to get the light score bishop out? That's the, the thing here for me. I'm going to play... Hmm. Could go for c5 just to liquidate the center, but I want to keep some tension. I'm going to play a capture here. And maybe just queen c7. Nah, let's play rook d8. Hey, good to hear, James. Good luck on your university final. Okay, let's play queen here. And I'm just going to try to complete development at this point. We'll see if he wants to go e4, e5. I think that would be critical, but... He seems content to build up for now. John, any thoughts on the Magnus Invitational? 
super exciting uh, tournament and final in particular with uh, Hikaru against Magnus. So yeah, it was fun. I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to watch much of the coverage of it. I would like to go back and, and look at some of it if I get a chance. Okay, um, let's play rook c8. I don't think he's threatening anything for the moment, but I do have to watch c-file situations that could develop. Do you play the queen d6 scandy? Very rarely, Arzenix. Hey, John, when are you going to take another stab at getting the GM title? It'll be a while for sure. I mean, even if tournaments were going on right now, I wouldn't be playing them. Just occupied with other projects. Okay, 94. Now, c5 is the move you really want to get in in these types of posi positions, but I'm going to play g6, I think, first. If he takes, I don't think a sack on g6 is going to work for white. He does have knight g5 here, but I guess I can play rook back to f8. He takes. Goes for f4. All right, so now I really want to think about playing c5. Yeah, I think this move is a no-brainer move. If he takes, I probably take here. Plays bishop e4, interesting. Let's go. Let's go here. So that I can threaten to take and discover attack on his queen. I'm not gonna take the knight yet. I think my bishop might have some opportunity to pressure d4 in the future. Oh thanks, Dr. Bojangles. He says you're a GM in my heart. <laughs> This move feels shaky. Let's take. I guess it's okay for him, but yeah, it feels shaky. He'll just take back now. Hmm, bishop a6 maybe, some pressure. I'm going to go here, I'm threatening rook takes d4 now, followed by bishop c5. It's a little bit risky playing around his knight like this, but I feel like taking on e5 is... Uh, not something that's going to lead to an edge so much. Okay, let's take. Knight here, I'll go rook d7 probably. Maybe I could pin him, but probably rook d7. Okay. Let's check. Pin. He has rook d4. Might be the only move here. Then I can trade and play rook d2. Mm. Might be a little bit better than that endgame. I should have played queen a8. That would have been stronger. Because then rook d4, I could actually play bishop takes d4. Okay, he finds it. Let's check. Go take this.
Let's take that. Mm-hmm. Let's check. Oh, that's a terrible move. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Just time pressure confusion. Knight h4 is winning. Yep. Okay, this one's over. Just playing a few moves out of inertia here, but that should be it. Yeah, too easily winning. Well, when you have a knight, you have a chance, as we've uh, established here <laughs> many times on this channel. It's a tricky position to play in practice. King g8 was terrible, though. It's kind of hard to find a move, though, for me. I guess I should move the bishop, probably. Bishop d6 or something. But yeah, King g8, I walked right into the into the pin. Naka just rage, rage quit. Ooh. Big missed opportunity right here. I could have played queen a8. I think that's just straight up winning because, well, okay, maybe he can go here. The game continues. But I was going to say queen a8, the big difference is that on rook d4, I can take with the bishop and my queen is not hanging. But maybe he can actually keep the game going with something like this. As if takes, there's check. It's tricky. And if I go f6, he takes here with check. Tough tournament. Napomnishi on 7 out of 7. VP setter. Russian FM on 7 out of 7. Players lurking on 6.5, and inc including our boy Giga. That's a great name, by the way. Giga Kuparadze. It'd be nice to get 5. I agree, Bob Marley died. Okay, last game of the, of the round here. I think there's a break after this one. Ooh, everyone's favorite title Tuesday checkmate. The old bishop and knight versus king. <laughs> Last time I streamed title Tuesday, there was a grandmaster who didn't know how to do this. Let's see if white can get it done here. They have the king in the right corner. Light color corner with a light square bishop to checkmate. Oh yeah, white's got this. This is mate. Nicely played by white capital 80. I mean, I say that, I didn't see the technique leading up to this. Actually, it did take them a substantial amount of moves. This is 115. When did that endgame start? Oh, wow. White, really? Oh, these knights, man, as we've established. So look at this. Black played king e5. Knight, knight f3 check, picking up the rook. That's brutal. In a position that black had no business losing. Hey, Dynamic Chess, thank you for subscribing. Two months. Cheers, Dynamic Chess, Inc. Thank you. Also, Wild Goose Chess, subscribing with a tier one. That's 24 months from Wild Goose Chess. Happy two years. It's been a good two years. Thank you, man. I believe we have another five-minute break, guys. Perchick, thanks for the 100 bits. John, did, did you see Levy Rosman calls you a top five IM in the world? Yeah, I don't know how I've gotten this reputation. I mean, I have good self-chess esteem. I like to think I'm a good player, but I mean, my FIDE rating is slightly under 2450. If you go by FIDE classical strength, there are far stronger IMs. I mean, there are IMs who are 2500 plus out there. 
So I think maybe people have this impression based on my online games. And I feel like I have the potential to be Grandmaster for sure. But so do a lot of other people. But I think those people are a little bit too kind saying I'm a top five IM in the world. My classical rating doesn't reflect that. Thank you, what is in the name? Big Steve, thank you for gifting that sub to Jackster the Pro. Thank you, Big Steve. Jackster the Pro appreciates it. <laughs> He's in the chat. Greg thinks you're the hero of chess. <laughs> I doubt that. I doubt that Greg thinks that. How many hours per day would you need to prep for GM norms? Um, I don't. I guess I don't think about it in terms of hours of day, Jedi Bleeder, but I would need to mainly just completely focus on playing and studying the game. And I'd have to shut down you know, everything else I'm doing for the most part. Uh, chessable, teaching, probably wouldn't be able to stream and make videos as much. It's not a huge priority for me right now. Okay, I'm going to run to the bathroom, guys. I'll be right back, and we'll get going with the next round. Three more rounds left. Or wait, what round is this? Yeah, three more. Eight, nine, ten. Be right back. Okay, let's take a look at the standings. Here they are once again. So Jan and VP Setter, who is VP Setter? Let's see if we can open their profile. Timur Fakrutudinov, okay, never heard of him, but doing very well. I don't see any big time streamers up here. Oh, Penguin, shout out to Penguin, Andrew Tang, my former student, he's killing it. Andrew is so strong, especially in online blitz and bullet. Don't know if he's streaming. I do see quite a few streamers in the mix. Yeah, Eric, Jan, uh, Krikor, shout out to Krikor. <laughs> Hikaru changed his, his Twitch title to uh, Chill Blitz, so I think, I think that's a clear indication that he dropped out, as someone said. Waiting for the next round here. Good afternoon, Empire. Hikaru has been playing a ton lately. I mean, he played the Magnus Invitational. He played that Nations Cup. He hopped in title Tuesday right after. Tang uploaded a video of him doing click accuracy training a couple weeks back. Crazy how much effort goes into getting good at bullet. Yeah, there is a video of Andrew playing this like tile game. That's absolutely unbelievable. Okay, D Papa Deech. Let's play D4. He plays this tile game where you just have to click the tiles as... as fast as they come up and it's one of the craziest mouse feats i've ever seen i mean maybe there's people who do this regularly and i just don't know about them but i was blown away let's play a different line of the kid here 
I'm gonna go into queen trade mode. This is actually a line that's in my uh, D4 course on Chessable, the free D4 course with about 55 lines. Rook D7, what's up with that move? That's really inviting knight takes E5. I remember something about this. Knight takes E5, knight takes D5, knight takes D7, knight B4. I think that's how it goes. I remember this being somewhat better for white. Let's see if I can recreate it. Yeah, take. And then here. And bishop f4, I think. Hold on, we got time to figure this out. I do think it's bishop f4. So let's go there. And rook takes b8, I think king c1, and then you, you converge on this knight. Yeah, pretty sure this is how it goes. Kudos to this guy for actually knowing this line, because knight d5, like this approach, it's not, it's not the most common way to play the exchange king's Indian, so he blitzed out rook d7, which is like a very awkward looking move here, right? Okay, so bishop e6. Yeah, let's just go get that knight. And white is up a pawn here, is one of the main points. Hello, let's have some chess. Greetings. F5, aggro. Okay, yeah, he's going for compensation. I can take, though. Take, bishop takes, take here. I've got a lot of important squares covered, so kind of leaning towards that. What, uh, what other approaches do I have here? Maybe e5. Probably also not half bad. Yeah, let's take. Okay, so up a pawn, but down a minute on the clock. This move I saw, I was thinking bishop d1 or perhaps just bishop e3, but then he has bishop d4. Go bishop d1. Yeah, thank you guys. Gotta watch that clock, as we know. Oh man, did I allow this? That was a big slip. Allowing that. Well, okay. This is check. I'm going to have to play bishop c1 after this. And then try for rook d1 after that, some sort of counterplay. Hmm. He just goes for a trade. Okay. Activate. Mm, let's 
let's go here. So dead even material. I guess I'll try for this in B4. A lot of bishop stuff going on here. Okay, I can play bishop f7 now. Go after this pawn. Bit of a mistake by him, allowing this. Very possibly still a draw, but, you know, if I can make him suffer a bit, that would be nice. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough to win, but we'll go for it. Let's go bishop back now. Trying to like slowly advance here. I only have two seconds left though, so. Oh, I had check there. Okay, this is something. Check. Is he losing now? I think he is. Okay. Yeah. Up a bishop. I'm going to march in. Okay, let's stop some counterplay, first of all. Not going to allow his king to come over. Could pull this back. Just bishop d6 coming. You guys will not be able to see the uh, two bishop checkmate, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Hey, that worked out okay. Getting back to an even score. That was a grind. He played like very active in the first part of the game and then kind of surprisingly passive after that. I was surprised by Rook F1 because I thought with me having a minute less on the clock, he would try for more here because he can retreat his bishop. Bishop E4, Bishop F5 or something. But he did this, and I mean, this is a total draw. But there's material on the board. We can fight this out. And I think a turning point was when, when his bishop got kind of sidelined on a6 in this construction. g6, h5 was weak. I mean, it's probably still a draw here. But now I'm up a pawn. I can torture him. Marshall, thanks for the 100 bits. This is great commentary. Thank you. Yeah, and I think after my, my G-Pawn starts to get going, it's winning. He's busted here. All right. I want to catch one of the top games if I can. What happened here? 
Ooh, Napomna, she won. Eight out of eight for him. Wow. After playing a lot of chess today. Do you guys know how Napomna, she did against Hikaru in that last game in the Nations Cup? I was watching that and it looked like he was suffering. Sam Mood beats Grishuk. Nepo lost. Okay. Yeah, it looked like it was slipping away from him. I think he pushed too hard. Yeah, exactly. Sun Tzu Lombardi. Hey, Empire. Likewise. Okay, last game of the round here. Guin Plan trying to eke out a victory here. So, how do you win a position like this? Somehow you have to interfere with the bishop guarding the b8 square, kind of like I was doing in that last game. Good to see you too, 10k mistakes. Yeah, this looks like a pretty dead draw, but white has the knight, 14 potential. If I'm black, I'm keeping this bishop far away from my, from my king. Okay, king c7. Could play king b8 here. It's not losing. But yeah, black's just going to keep their king on c6, c7 if possible. Guarding that queening square. Tough to see how white does much here. Because they really need their king on the other side of the pawn. So they got to run an interference on c7. Thanks, Adelmas. Thanks again for all the support today, guys. You guys came flying out of the gate with those gift subs and follows. Nice messages in the chat. We've kept up a good vibe here the whole stream. All right. Last game of the tournament. Or wait, we have two more? Yeah, two more games. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, here we go. Get ready. <laughs> Queen d8 Scandi versus Eric Ronka. All right. Take mainline stuff here. Mainline Scandi. Ooh, he plays the fashionable bishop f4. I'm not going to take that pawn on d4. I don't like to do that in this line. People know how to combat the queen d8 Scandi a little bit better these days. They are more familiar. Take. This guy knows what he's doing. If he plays g4 here, he's really researched. Okay, bishop d3, also playable. Mm. Could castle, but I sometimes like to keep my king in the center in this type of position. If queen f6, he can try queen c7 and look for some pressure. So I'm going to play queen b8. Thanks, Tiag Val. Yeah, a lot of Team Scandies in the chat. Let me add my own. <laughs> we built this Scandy on square control. Light square control, to be, to be precise. Hey, thanks, Belgian novice. Okay, queen h4. Let's go back and see what he does. Exactly, Schoolsmeyer. Clearly, this guy's been studying. Oh, I don't want to draw. I don't want to draw. We can't draw this position. All right. We're castling. Insta G4. Okay. Let's play... Let's play knight f6. Try to wheel around to d5. And if he plays c4, I'm going to play b5. And try to wrest control of the d5 square away from him. Okay, 
Repeat wants to show who's boss. <laughs> this is perfect. Nice. Always repeat, as Ben says. Okay. Mm Probably play queen e4. Now let's stop the mate threat. Expecting c4. But then I do have knight b4, to be fair. Thanks, Fuzz, for the 100 bits. Appreciate it. Okay, knight, B, knight c3 would be a nice shot to land, but I'm not getting that anytime soon. Could play queen b6 in preparation for that, but that's also not going to, to work. Let's play queen c7. h5, I'm going to go queen f4. Thank you, Pablo. Appreciate you saying that. Thanks for watching. Okay, get the queen in. He'll probably pull his queen back. Pulls it back there, interesting. So he's trying to go to the H file. Let's go here. We're crouching. We're crouching in Scandi formation. Hmm, that is a surprising move. Looking for rook e4, I suppose. All right. Hmm. Think about going for this. Getting sharp. I can take here now. He's on my rook, but I'm on his rook. I'm surprised by the way he played this, because he was looking like he was going to attack on the king side, but then he abruptly switched to the center. I like my position now. He might just want to take on d5. Goes there, okay. Knight's patrolling the f6 square, so that's useful. And now I have to take this way to guard the f6 point. Wow. No back rank issue here? Guess not. Queen f4 fails. Okay, let's go here. I was looking at check and queen f4, but he can actually take my queen or take my rook then. So let's go pick off the g5 pawn. Wait, what? I just take. Back rank. Back rank, my friend. All right. Whew. There we go. A Scandi victory. Let's chalk it up. <laughs> sharp one right there there were mutual king issues that we had to grapple with rook takes d4 he might be justified in playing that move because all right i thought it was a problem at first due to check here and then some sort of deflection on his queen but he has too many ways to solve that like queen f4 he could actually even take and just do this and he's probably winning so I think queen e5 was a good call on my part. Attack the rook and menace the back rank stuff. And I think he kind of panicked here. He should play rook d1 more than likely. 
yeah, rook d1 would be correct here. And then I was going to take on g5. You know, he probably has to waste a move playing a3. But this is still very much a game. Or queen takes d5. Hard to say who's better here. Material is equal. If both sides want to advance their pawns, they have to weaken their king to do so. It's 10 games, so we got one more left. Let's try to peek on the top game. Parhama versus Nepomnishi. Okay, Parhamov is battling here. He's trying to win. But Nepo, he's keeping his king in the corner in this queen ending. That's a good strategy. You don't want to bring your king too close because there's more likely going to be a queen trade. He knows. Still, though, I would be amazed if Nepo was able to hold this. Down two pawns. This is going to be very difficult. Yeah, because now, check. You got to know the patterns very well here. Hey, Mayo Cat, gifting five subs to the channel to Nimzovich Defense. I have a problem. Mr. Fart Brains, five card draw, and Shane Kane. Hey, thank you, Mayo Cat. Cheers. Yeah, if you're black and the checks run out, as they do here, not quite. Okay, checks continue. Okay, now g5 probably. Advance, queen d5. Yeah, thanks again, Mayo Cat. Good cat, says Connor Monday. Agreed. Now he's going to the other corner with the king. This is uh, some Russian chess school understanding right here. Because he doesn't want a possibility of a queen trade on the 7th or 8th rank if he keeps his king chilling over here now. Now, if you check there, then queen f6. So black's out of check. Same with that one. Oh, this is an absolute minefield ending. Nepo wins this. He deserves, or uh, if he draws this, he deserves to win the tournament. IMO. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Now queen d5 just centralizing because... Uh, white's king is in front of the pawn, so the pawn's not advancing here. Queen h8, okay. Ooh, careful. Can't go to there because of queen f6. Ooh, I feel like white is probably winning now because that pawn is advancing. Black has to go for another series of checks. Ooh, but with the king on c1, you can't check there. Queen g5, Parhamov gets it. Oh, that's such a tough ending. Tough. Very good defense, though, by Nepo for many, many moves. That's a good one to study, guys, if you're interested in king and queen and pawn versus king and queen. Um, super difficult ending. So you got to feel for Nepo there. All right, playing pomegranate. Let's go e4. Last game of the tournament, guys. Playing another Georgian Grandmaster. Who is this? Bella Kotonashvili. All right. Not familiar with this player. Let's play the old H H4 Caro, shall we? Induce a Scandi. Like play play D3 on move one, looking for a Scandi. Bishop E7. Hmm. Usually they put the knight there. What is up with that? Thinking about queen b3. Queen b3 seems interesting. Let's go for it. And Blade Master, hey, thank you for subscribing. Mr. Blade. Guy Gobert says, last game, good vibes, feel the wind coming. Thank you. Yeah, let's do our best here. Okay, so I have a space advantage. But, long way to go. <clears throat> let's play... Bishop g5 always kind of appeals to me in this type of structure. But let's play bishop f4. Yeah, I did catch Dania's impression of me, Oaken. That was pretty good, I gotta say. 
Danya is great with impressions. Okay, so let's play a3 here. I feel like c5 is coming at some point. Man, 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 exactly. <laughs> Danya knows. Okay, line up against the queen. Introducing some knight b5 business. Probably black will sidestep. Ooh, no sidestepping today. Knight b5 maybe not leading to anything. I can drop the knight in on d6, but perhaps there's nothing more after that. Hmm, do I just have problems with the d4 and h4 pawns here? Maybe. It's queen d1, black can take. Okay, let's play Queen D1. Big Druby, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime. He started saying man, 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 unironically. Nice. He has a diverse repertoire of impressions. Thanks, Johnny Waffles. Subscribing to Twitch Prime. Parhama versus Dulles. Daniel Dubov on top board. Okay. We'll take a look at that next if we get a chance, Sun Tzu. So critical for black here is to take and take on h4, no doubt. But I could take and maybe knight b5, knight d6. So black just prefers a solid move. Okay, I'm going to do the same. I mean, this might be a big theme in the future. And Sir Zaki Rochester, thank you for subscribing. Tier 1 sub, thank you. All right. Let's pull this back. Ah, is B5 going to happen? B5 I can... Mm. Bishop e2 might have been a bad decision. I think it was. Yeah. Got to pull this back to defend d4. I missed that queen a7 was helping the knight attack d4. Robbie, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime. It even blocked my knight from getting to e2. Bummer. All right, take. Probably time to castle. It's been a while. Move 21, not too late. Both under a minute. Hmm, could play rook a1 and just trade. It might not be so bad because black is, is going to have to spend some time to get there. Um, their king castled. Hmm. Let's do this with the idea that if it takes on b2, I take here. It's even rook b1 ideas, but no, I think I want to take here. Hmm. Okay. Queen c2, bishop d1. Okay. Not sure what's happening here. Ah, did I have bishop c1? Bishop c1 might be good. Mm. 
And I'm going to block. I'm going for the W. Wait, what? What is this? Oh, oh my gosh. I had no idea I was that low on time. Uh, oh man, 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 man. <laughs> Brutal. Totally didn't realize that. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, that was awful. I was so caught up. Mm. Not my best performance. Yeah, tactics were very strange here. Maybe I really had nothing. I was trying to win that night on D7 very earnestly, but it was never working. Move 27, knight was hanging. Well, thing is, if I take their knight, they take my knight on c3. That's what I was trying to avoid. So, mm, bummer of an end. Okay, let's try to catch the top game if we can. Is this for all the mar mar bleh, can't even talk. marbles here? Okay, black's totally winning, should be. Oh, king d4. Wow. This is a draw. I've actually seen a position identical to that, just with pawns on different files. What a swindle by Parhamov. Not even a swindle. I mean, black just blew that. Oh, you just assume this is a draw. Because king takes e4, king c5 is winning for black. It, black gets around to the b3 square. But splitting the pawns with king d4. Yeah. Uh, there's an exercise I give to my students involving exactly the same theme. Oh, that hurts. So Paramov wins the tournament, I think. Eight and a half out of nine. Is there anyone who can catch him? Or, sorry, um, nine out of ten. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's several people, actually, on nine out of ten who finished. So is there anyone on eight and a half out of nine who can win it? Doesn't look like it. So, big tie for first, it seems. Yeah. And Simon Weber Chess, thank you for subscribing, Twitch Prime. Wait, what? Okay, <laughs> Black just blundered huge right there. Allowing their rook to get skewered. Hmm. I would have tried. Uh, there's no stalemate. King a1. Rook over. Checkmate. So Fedoseyev wins. He gets to 8 out of 10. That's going to be the end of the tournament, though. I think. All right. Tournament over. Anton Demchenko wins on tiebreaks. Didn't even look at any of his games. I am Tomino. This is a strong player. They've been up there in some title Tuesdays recently. They take second place, 9 out of 10. And Parhamov gets third with that victory that uh <laughs> victory against or sorry that draw against Dubov yeah have caught some blunders okay so I got five out of ten I forgot to check what place I finished in but doesn't matter yeah not a good performance on my part I wasn't too focused in this one. So it could have been way better. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed hanging out with you guys. All decisive games. No draws in my tournament today. Some stuff to look at and improve on. Penguin got 8 out of 10. Nice. Good job, Andrew. Good score by him. Ah, oh, Peter Svidler was playing. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Bob Marley. I'll post this on YouTube as well. You guys can watch it here 
archive version on Twitch, but also post it on YouTube. Hello to the YouTube people watching in the future. Yeah, thanks, James. And thanks again to everyone, uh, especially the people who are gifting subs today and subscribing themselves. You guys are awesome. There are a lot of gifted subs and just general love in the chat today. So I think I, I hit pretty much everyone. If I missed a notification, I apologize. But uh, special thanks to Big Steve, Belgian Novice, uh, also Presetex, Mayo Cat, all these people gifted multiple subs. Belgian Novice gifting bits as well. Many people giving giving bits actually. Thanks to the longtime subscribers, those of you who are 12, 24 month subscriber. Yeah, thanks, Big Steve. He is the man. All right, I think I'm gonna run, guys. Who should we send this off to? Let's see. Let's send it to uh, Eric and the bras. Might be Amon who's playing. Yeah, thanks again, guys. Have a good day. I'll be back soon. We'll keep this going. Not a great performance today, but it's fun. And uh, just trying to get some games in still. And, you know, my time management was... it. I returned to my former ways, time management-wise. So we'll work on that for sure. Did get a Scandi victory, though. Yeah, have a good night. Have a good day, everyone. See you guys later. Bye.